Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of How to Draw Anything. My name is Debbie, and I work for San Mateo County Libraries, and you would normally find me at the Millbury Branch. And we also have... Mm -hmm. My name is Lynn. I also work for the San Mateo County Libraries. You may recognize my face from the Belmont Branch or maybe from some of the other art programs that we have been streaming online. And we are back with another round of How to Draw Anything. Um, today is going to be somewhere in between a prompt and a doodle lesson because Debbie has asked that I talk a little bit about shadows and or shading, which will be interesting because I am supremely lazy on both those fronts. <laughs> and I am, I feel like I am not too skilled in shadow, so I am looking forward to learning from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like most of my shading is very improvised, and I have leaned so heavily into a cartoony style because it allows more improvisation than if you wanted to do real things, but I think I've had a few little, like, tips and tricks that will hopefully help, so. Awesome. And maybe time to do a couple doodles as well, just to show off what you can do with shadows, because they can be really cool parts of your drawings. <laughs> yeah, I feel uh, like, you know, whenever I do my shadows, it's like, um, you know, I, sometimes I do well at it, but sometimes I don't, and so mm -hmm. it's a matter of, like, trial and error in a way, and so I feel mm -hmm. like, okay, it'd be nice to kind of uh, dive a little deeper and kind of analyze like what makes good shadows and you know <laughs> uh, you know what techniques there are to, mm -hmm. to make better shadows so that that's okay. my request <laughs> okay <laughs> I can try okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen Thank you. Thank you. One. all right and we've got a nice blank canvas to start with. So, cheating Please. slash shadows. I have a pencil tool selected right now because I think that might work a little better for the purposes of shading because there's kind of a two and a half, I'd say, directions you can go with, which is either the realistic version in which being able to gradate helps a lot, or um, you have the exaggerated version and or the extremely minimal version, which is like the half, where it's very much just solid lines on the face, shadow is in that section that you've sectioned off. But generally speaking, let's start with the world's most classic example of let's pretend you have a ball just lying on the ground and you have a little sun that is up in the corner here. Light is going to be aimed at the object in this direction, essentially. So wherever the light is, the shadow is going to be darkest on that opposite side. And part of why I think a lot of the go-to tutorials start with spheres and circles is because due to like the curve of their shape they sort of best exemplify that gradient that i mentioned mm -hmm. where you have a transition from absolutely completely in dark shadows to slight shadow all the way up until you are fully in the area where it's just being hit by light and so if you're looking for something to be a little more realistic looking. It's very much a matter of trying to understand the surface that you are drawing against and how its shape would affect that gradient of the shadow. So obviously this is very messy and you can go as much or as little as you want. The amount of shadow you put into a drawing will also kind of affect the tone and the realism of it to an extent as well, but yeah, that's kind of the classic example of start with a basic surface, decide your light source direction, 
shadow is darkest when it's farthest away from that. Which on the flip side, let's say you have, that was a bad cube. Yeah. Let's say you have a cube and the light once again is coming from like up top this direction, you're not gonna have as much of a gradient because this entire flat surface side is completely facing away from the light. There's nothing sort of spilling on and across it. And to an extent, if it's coming from the top, this side's probably gonna be in shadow as well. So both the light and the dark sides are very important when it comes to shadows because it's the contrast that they give that sort of offers the object a sense of three-dimensionality. But So you may have noticed I mentioned I'm using a pencil tool. My current method for shading these is literally just press down harder and then very slowly lighten in order to create a kind of gradient effect but there are actually other sort of methods of imitating that feeling that don't necessarily require you to physically lighten the tool that you're using which can be very useful if for instance you're trying to shade with ink which does not naturally gradate as much as a pencil does so i'm gonna switch to pen and we're gonna attempt to talk cross-hatching. Ooh! <laughs> something I do very much. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> yeah, so right now I'm mostly focusing on if you want to imitate the sense of something gradating, here's kind of how to do it. I'm actually gonna make a different pen because I want something that is very much, this is a solid line that you can't lighten. Mm -hmm. So. Let's actually just start without a shape. So the idea of cross-hatching is there's kind of a few different variations and I'm like 90% positive they have their own names, but I don't recall them right now, so I'm just calling them all cross-hatching. <laughs> but it's essentially the idea of doing sort of a series of lines, either just straight lines, uh, lines that cross over each other, or even occasionally like dots. Mm -hmm. And the idea with all of these is instead of lightening the actual tone of the material, like the physical material making it lighter, instead what you're doing is you're changing the spacing of the lines or the dots that you're putting down in order to imitate that gradation. So, when you have an object, let's go back to our friendly circle friend, and you have the light coming from this direction, making it so the darkest part of the object has the most number of lines that are all the closest together. And then as you start moving into what is a lighter section of it, you start spacing them out, you start putting less lines down, that can roughly imitate the feeling of something moving from very dark shadows to a bit lighter shadows. And you don't even have to do it across the full thing, just where you think the rough general shadow would be falling. So like I said, I am not the world's greatest cross hatcher it's not something i indulge in very often but this is sort of the fundamental idea it's concentrated on the rough spacing of the lines that imitates what would be happening if you were actually literally lightening the shadow across the surface that you're shading essentially so Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> okay, fantastic. <Honestly. laughs> okay, you're my main audience currently. Yeah. <laughs> Important. 
And so, like I said, this is a method that works sort of regardless of what you're using to fill it in, whether it's just single straight lines, whether you're actually doing the traditional cross hatching, which is literally just the multiple, multiple tic-tac-toe boards, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> just drawing lines over top of each other. But generally, as X's, like, you don't necessarily want to have all the lines going every which way. Mm -hmm. At least that's not how I normally see it, because... Mm. The direction of the lines also sort of indicate the direction of the object. So, for instance, it kind of feels like that's the curve of the ball based on the rough general direction of the lines being that way. Or like with little dots, same thing. It's a, it's a matter of the spacing rather than the actual color that you're using. So, Again, great, great thing if you're working with inks and you want to imitate the idea of a gradation. And it's very much one of those things where you can put more time and effort into it and often make it still feel very realistic, or you can keep it very simple and still have it feel relatively cartoony, but still like a real surface because you see that gradation. Mm -hmm. And I then- rem I, rem I remember the uh, technical term for the dots. It's stippling. Yes, that's the word. I knew it had a different word. I was like, this isn't cross-hatching, but it works functionally the same. You just need a lot of patience for it. I remember it from my art school days. Stippling. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's fun to do. It is. It takes a while, but it's fun. It takes a long time. <laughs> yes, so this one's cross-hatching. This one's stippling. This one's like possibly also cross-hatching but maybe not <laughs> but the same the yeah. same real idea yeah <laughs> it's all about that sense of the more lines you do close together the darker it feels even though functionally this color is not actually different than this color mm -hmm. it's just the degree to which it's present on the page right and so those are kind of the go-to tips I have in terms of trying to do like realistic soft grade 80 shadows, but you can also lean more into cartoony styles, which tend to boil down to either extreme exaggerated or extremely minimal. <laughs> mm. So I'm trying to think how best to show this. <laughs> Let me see if I can do a very quick we have a lesson on how to draw faces if you're interested in those. I'm going to do it very quickly right now and very messily. Yes, as in a previous episode. Nose is like here. All right, so the human face is not a flat surface. It is, in fact, an interesting kind of shape because its face, its general shape is going to be very much like the sphere you were looking at in terms of it curves, therefore the shadows would theoretically fall in sort of a soft gradient. However, we have certain bumps and features that stick out and create much sharper shadows like you would get when, say, you're working with something like a cube that has hard lines that make it so the gradation of shadows don't really happen. And so when you are shading a face, you kind of have the two options of, if you're going for realism, you're still going to be focusing a lot on emphasizing sort of the soft curves and blends of shadows combined with sort of the darker, harsher places where light might hit because of like your nose blocking things or things like that. Or if you're going for something a little more dramatic and a little more deliberately cartoony, not necessarily like cartoony cartoony, but like clearly stylized, you can instead focus solely on what parts of the shape are going to block light and black those out, essentially. So, for instance, we got a nice little relatively friendly face here. Let's say light is coming from this direction. That means that this side of the face 
is going to be decently well lit, whereas this side of the face is going to be in shadow. And based on the features, where your brow is, where your nose is, kind of even where your mouth is, you can usually sort of follow a line that sort of just goes down the center. And aside from keeping in mind like where highlights may still hit in order to keep a sense of there being a face, let's see if I have this selected enough that I can just do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can just straight up have that entire face represented as being in shadow, essentially. So there's certain things that you would still be able to kind of make out, like the fact that there is, in fact, another eye on that side. Let's see if I can vaguely mark that. You may still have like highlighting moments of where the brow is, but functionally, nope, that's not closed. I caught uh -huh. time. <laughs> but functionally, you can do very cool dramatic effects by sort of mapping out where would a shadow naturally hit and showing it as nothing but shadow. So the emphasis becomes focused on what negative space is left over rather than what the natural gradation of the shadow itself is. So if you're going for like a very classic noir effect, heavy shadows, if you're looking for something that's very dramatic, you'll often see this in film as well, things with heavy shadows, which is actually a great place, incidentally, to study lighting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm in the, kind of like looking at myself in the camera, mm -hmm. and I see, you know, my light source is on my right, and I guess your left. Mm -hmm. So my right yep. side is all, you can see all that light hitting my face, but then I also mm -hmm. have most of it is actually dark. Dark in here, mm -hmm. right there. So yeah, yeah. Um, Lynn just kind of, you know, recreated that um, in, a, in a much more, you know, blocked, mm -hmm. uh, you know, only two color, um, which is black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's very much something that you can play with if you're interested in just sort of doing the most basic definitions of a human face rather than trying to like really softly gradate things in. But that's a very good example of how understanding what the surface of what you're looking at is and how it affects shadows. So for instance, if we're going back to our just a regular ball example, and we wanted to do really harsh shadows, instead of doing a gradation, that's not a very good circle, <laughs> you may focus solely on blocking off that very bottom section that you know for a fact would be completely in the dark because of the light coming that way and leave the shadow just there as that very harsh line of separation. Here is light, here is dark. So it's when you start to do more nuances in the middle that you'll often start to find art that looks more realistic. Like, it's never one one thing. People have a huge range of what they do, but that's kind of a good rule of thumb. And then, hmm. I think my one other tip that I might have, which sort of boils down to how I do shading, Mm -hmm. which um, I, I draw people a lot. That's sort of my go-to thing. So I tend to worry less about environments and lighting. I tend to improvise even more so there than I do with people. But when shading people, I do have sort of a few key areas that I'll consider whether or not I'll put shadows in. Actually, we're going to do a three-quarters perspective. Mm. I'm going to draw one of my own characters, because she's easy. Because <laughs> there's sort of a few key areas that I like to keep in mind that I use as sort of easy means of just mapping out shadows, almost regardless 
of what situation the characters are in. And from there, I'll rely on environment to sort of make it feel like the lighting feels natural to where they are. But the shadows on their basic facial shapes sort of remain the same. I'm gonna clean her up slightly so there's less guidelines to get in the way. But I think we'll have time to squeeze her in as a slightly messy example. <laughs> hmm. So, all right, character Jenna. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna do a separate layer for this so that it might stand out a little more. So, what I like to do, uh, kind of, again, kind of regardless of the situation the characters are in, I will almost always look to put shadows in kind of a triangular shape, right underneath the chin across the neck. I'll put a shadow there. Um, it depends a little bit on the angle, but whatever angle is facing sort of away from the audience, I'll put kind of a shadow in between, like, between like the bridge of the eyebrow and the nose where that crosses over the eye. If they have hair that is falling into their face, I'll put a small little shadow just underneath that. There we go. Cool. That really brings out, pops out her bangs. Yep. Yeah. And this depends a little more specifically on what lighting I actually care about. But oftentimes, I will also put some degree of a shadow that just follows the jawline and goes slightly in and around the ears. Because I don't really detail ears, like I just leave them completely blank, but I'll add a little bit of a shadow that sort of imagines as if there were details there. So if you're always doing lighting on the other side, I would do something similar with this little bunch of cheek. I do a little bit of a shadow there. And then again, depending on hair, I like to put, oops, I'll put an indication of which section is in the back versus in the front. Because when you have like hair that hangs forward enough, you'll have sections that are forward. And then what you're actually seeing here is behind the back of your head. Like this is the backside of that hair. So I like to shade that in so that you know that it's curved essentially around your head. So I'll just do that on the other side to balance that out. And then I'll often do a very small shadow that very, very vaguely correlates with kind of that space between where your collarbone is and where the top of your shoulder is. So those are sort of my absolute bare minimum go-to places for adding shadows to characters. And as you saw, I tend to view them as just solid block lines rather than gradients, but I do tend to do them with deliberately light colors so that they don't like super stand out. So it's not quite as dramatic as if it was just black shadow in those spots, but it's still very much of that same idea, but generally kept minimal. So those are sort of my go-to tips on if you want to add at least a little three-dimensionality. Where the chin casts a natural shadow over the neck, where the nose and brow catch a nat catch cast, <laughs> okay, yeah, cast. trying to say. <laughs> where the brow and the nose cast a natural shadow um, in between the eyebrow and the eye and any sort of shadows naturally caused by the hair and or if you want to help define the jawline, just a little something that indicates that sharper edge versus the softer gradient circle of the face. So, and I can tell that the, the light is coming from the top mm -hmm. um, because underneath her ears is, you know, it's all opposite mm -hmm. direction from from yeah, the yeah, there's a lot more nuances you can definitely do where, like, 
if for instance, let's see if I can even try this. <laughs> if for instance, let's say the light is coming from like underneath, that's going to change what shadows are being cast where, mm. because now the facial shape is being hit in a different way. And this is going to go into like theories and anatomies that I'm not quite as <laughs> skilled at, but in this case, um, if the light's coming from directly underneath you, then that means that the chin is sort of blocking light in the opposite direction. So you're going to get less of a shadow where it would normally hit under here and a lot more sort of like up above maybe that's why you always look creepy when you stick a flashlight under your face mm -hmm. Cause yeah because it's sort of highlighting things in reverse mm -hmm. yeah, select and I tend to keep my shadows very, very loose and improvised. Mm -hmm. Like, as you may notice, I'm not really selecting very specific sections. I just sort of like, that. my personal preference is just to sort of grab random areas and be like, here-ish, <laughs> and just fill out from there just how I think what makes it look best. <laughs> right. But yeah, a vague attempt at if light was coming from that direction and was hitting the face from underneath. It changes the direction, it changes what parts of what's sticking out blocks what. So, like many things with people, the very good thing about them is while they're hard to draw, you are your own best model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you always have yourself to reference for these things. If you're able to find a flashlight or you have your phone has a flashlight or something, as long as you don't blind yourself, be careful about that. <laughs> you can play around and just change where your lighting is coming from and see how that changes the directions the shadows fall. And it helps give even your cartoony things a little more three-dimensionality to them, which, depending on your style, can be a nice touch. Yep. Although there's plenty of cartoons out there that just do completely flat colors and equally work as well because they're really good at picking colors that just feel full. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I, yeah, I definitely feel like just that little bit of shadow that you added mm -hmm. changes the, the the mood of of the drawing, you know, mm -hmm. very dramatically. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, it can be a lot of fun. One. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So yeah, practice your your shadows and just see how how much it changes your drawings, and um, you can improve your drawings. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. a fun thing to play with for sure. Yeah, and. Like a lot of things, especially if you're sort of working on how to draw the same object in different like angles and things, knowing how the shadows work is hugely beneficial because it gives you even more information on how to improvise with something. Like part of the understanding of like, oh, the nose is vaguely like a triangle comes from the fact that, oh, it casts something of a triangle shadow that changes, that still remains a triangle but changes direction depending on like the light source that's hitting it. So it can be a lot of fun to play with. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to keep mine minimal, but yeah. it, but it really adds a lot. Add, yeah. It adds a nice little something where you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now there's like grounding to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even when it is literally just like, I drew a person. Let me go back to gray. <laughs> mm -hmm. I drew a person standing and those are the legs. And then I added a big blob of the shadow and now it looks like they're actually standing on something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Just that little bit. All it bit. takes. Just mm -hmm. that little bit. Few more strokes of the pen can, mm -hmm. change, uh, can change your drawing dramatically. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, I think those are sort of my... It felt a little rambly, but that's okay. It was improvised. <laughs> but I think those are sort of my go-to thoughts and feelings about shadows and maybe some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you out. <laughs> And hopefully you're inspired to, to, you know, experiment with shadows and, and mm -hmm. draw them and see what they can add to your drawings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, as I keep saying, it's okay if they're loose. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> to a certain extent, especially if you're trying to imitate, like, a soft gradient, having, like, kind of vaguely defined edges of shadows may actually help a little bit, mm -hmm. rather than having it be, like, perfectly straight lines. Like, 
allowing it to be a little messy almost implies that there's more natural bumps and ridges that it's not quite lining up with. Right. I think to an extent that's why my version of like, here's just a vague section where a shadow might be, tends to work. Because yeah. that's all the information you need. Exactly. Right, so I am going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Oh, awesome. oh, that was half an hour. That didn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, are yeah. you drawing your shadows? Share your, share your shadow drawings with us. You can tag your drawings on social media at SNC Libraries. Mm -hmm. Share your, um, you know, what you've been experimenting with shadows and whatnot. You can also use the hashtag SMCLCreates. So we'd love to see your shadow drawings. We would love to see what you're doing. <laughs> and then also you can always go to smcl.org to see all of our other um, programs that we've been having, story times, um, even just the, the live programs that we've been um, having as well, where you can have interactivity. Um, yeah, we've been having book clubs going on. We've been having story cafe. Mm -hmm. We've been having uh, some tech courses that have been popping up. And tech Are challenges all. for young people too, mm -hmm. um, STEAM, STEAM challenges. So go to yeah. smcl.org for all the great programs that are available. Yeah, it's the best place for all the easy links to all the cool things that we're doing. <laughs> all right, but I think that should pretty firmly put us at the end of the episode, considering how long I was apparently talking. <laughs> <laughs> teaching, teaching. Teaching, teaching. <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> All right, but thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something new. I hope you have fun applying it to your own drawings. And otherwise, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye.